Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from round 13 of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. On the white end, Fabiano Caruana. He's paired against Levon Aronian. Some of you may be confused at the moment if you watch my previous video. I pointed out that this matchup would occur in the 14th and final round. I was mistaken. Uh, so let's dive in and see what happened between these two. Going into round 13, both Caruana and Karyakin are tied for first with 7 points. So Aurelio Lopez on board. What type of Roy Lopez? We have a closed system. And what to note with this one? Both sides have their king safe. Bishop to d2, move 9. Directed at the a5 square. There will be no quick knight a5 and c5. This is commonplace on the black side in the Rui. This is not a possibility at the moment. White retains some flexibility with this move. Some flexibility with the queen knight. White keeps open the option of knight c3 and to d5. So this is a common move at this point, c3. Bishop d2. The knight still has this possibility. So as an example line, black on move now, of course. If the bishop fianchettos, don't be surprised to see an a3 or a4 tucking the bishop away and then knight c3 into d5 idea. Okay, in this game it's a pin on the knight, c3 only now, black breaks in the center, a question is asked of the bishop, the pin is maintained, queen to e2, rook to b8, and now the bishop doesn't have a purpose on d2 anymore. Obstructed by the pawn, so bishop g5, d file now opened. And what to do with the bishop? He goes back home. This is the more important of the two bishops, as active as this bishop is. I mean, both, both are good. We define this one as the bad bishop in this case. And he has a, a very important job defending f4. This is a sensitive square. A knight dropping in there, need to knock that knight out. So, bishop g6, this is what black is lining up. White makes use of d2. And f1. Just in time to stop the knight f4 move. That would hit hard with tempo. So, bishop is there. Bishop c5 in the game. g3. Both sides get their king on a better square. Both were in some pin by the bishops. Continuing queen e7, bishop c2 is opening a b4 move. This is what we have. Black hat's on an open file, b4 hits. And so now the bishop is a bit... Well, this is one of the better pieces for black, but now, you know, it's not functioning in an x direction. There's basically just one diagonal it's functioning on, and it's a strong one, pointing right at the white camp. Continuing, we have a4, so white is in a position to, at any moment, on white's terms, peel open the a-file. This is, uh, after a4, knight to f6, Ronian's last move, this is giving white an opportunity to create some complications, some, to create some imbalance. So white at this moment has an opportunity to capture on b5, allow this discovered attack against the queen, and go in for something messy like this, but Caruana doesn't. Avoids those complications, but soon we have some other complications that arise. In the in the game, it's knight to h4. So, targeting the bishop, queen e6, and now bishop to d3. So, white doesn't want to go in for this capture and then have the queen on b5. Instead, he wants the bishop to win the pawn, and then, the, you know, the queen is, of course, much more safe. Aronian sees this as a, uh, an opportunity to save the bishop and create some complications. Bishop to h5, striking at the queen, and with this, Aronian is prepared to sacrifice. After the move in the game g4, it would be silly to see the bishop return, as white could just go ahead and take out the knight, take on b5. 
the idea is to sacrifice on g4, and this is what we have. Bishop takes g4, pawn takes, and knight takes. Black is doing it in this order, so that in the end, the piece that remains on g4 is now helping to converge on f2. So, white is up a knight, and black has two extra pawns. Knight versus two pawns position. In the game, knight f5 follows. The f pawn is taken out. White has the extra knight. Black has three extra pawns. How will this play out? First, the bishop is saved. It was struck at twice. So, continuing, it's g6. And now white has to be very careful. Um, in different situations, this would be a poor move. As now h6 is, you know, can be picked up, but not here. Knight takes h6 and a checkmate in 2 would occur. So you can't take on h6, of course. What is tried? Knight on f1 to e3. When I was watching this game live, I thought that it would have been better to drop this knight back and not allow the knight to be captured because then the g-file would be opened up and you're subjecting your king who is now without a shelter to major piece pressure on the g-file. We don't have that in this game though. Caruana moves forward, gives this knight up, g takes, g-file is now opened, black down a piece but has some avenues to attack the white king. The reply here is e takes f5, so now, the queen is hit, and notice what that move knight e3 is doing. It's cutting off the defense of the knight. So both queen and knight are in some trouble. Black saves the queen, of course. And now white recaptures with the queen. This is guarding the h4 square. And a follow-up move, we now have e4. So black really wants a square for the knight. At the moment, c3 is doing a good job. Uh, c3 is doing a good job controlling the knight. In the game, we have e4. And at this point, so this is move 31, e4. Black has very little time at this stage. Neither player has a ton of time. Still have to meet uh, move 40. Uh, Black has an opportunity to create a lot of chaos at this moment here, instead of the move e4. What is this chaos exactly? Well, maybe that's the wrong term, but there is a sacrifice idea by black, capturing on b4, and then following up with rook to d4. And you could very easily see this going wrong fast for white. We have every one of black's pieces soon to be really active. I mean, just one move out. We have pressure on the fourth rank, Bishop bearing down in this direction, checks, multiple checks against the white king, rook to f4 in, in the event of king to f1. One of the top moves for white in the computer's eyes in this position is king to h3. Moving forward when there's still all major pieces on black side, scaring. And with not a lot of time, 13 or so minutes for Caruana. That's really not a lot to really to to work with in such a comp complicated position. Anyhow, this isn't something that Black pulls the trigger on. Maybe given some more time, maybe not being in blitz mode at this stage, uh, Aronian could come up with this, but not in this game. E4 is tried, and what follows is Rook to H1. So now, in the event of a check, the king is. Ready to go here, and the rook is not cut off from coming over to the king's side. White is basically focusing now on the h6 square. This bishop that made a few moves, right? It went to d2, g5, and then back home. h6 is a point of interest. Rook d6, adding some defense. Bishop takes e4 only now. Check, king f1. After knight e5, white continues to build on this pressure. 
c6 is securing the queen. There's a knight d5 idea, so this is ruled out. Um, white misses an opportunity here after c6 to sacrifice on h6. Well, not with the queen. White has an opportunity after c6. Instead of capturing on b5, the move in the game, white could take on h6 straight away. And after a capture, there's this cool follow-up move, f6, discover check, cutting off the defense of the queen. And let's say after a block, you could take the queen and then follow up with the fork. White is simply up a piece and, yeah, a full piece at that point. Doesn't go for this, though. Instead, captures on b5. Rook to g5. Some defense along the diagonal towards h6. White continues to grab some material. His pawn is now passed. And following up after queen to d8. f6 discover check. Knight block. And at this point, white crashes through with rook takes h6. So doesn't pull the trigger on rook takes h6 at that first moment that it was available after c6. But on this move 39, it is yet again available, and this game goes no further. Aronian resigns. What would happen after king takes rook? Queen h2 check. And if the knight blocks, it's a mate in 2. Very cool. Mate in 2. That's a double check. And mate. Blocking in a different way, with let's say the rook, would allow. Knight to g4 check, queen takes rook check, and bishop takes knight. Multiple approaches here. There's even knight to f5 as I check, check, check. There's no attack here for team black. Computer suggesting you take the knight. If you take like this, there's something very simple. You could always exchange queens, be up a piece, and push your pawn. There's just no good solution at this point after the rook smashes through. Rook takes it. Rook takes h6. This is as far as it goes. Aronian resigns. This was a huge win in the tournament without question. Uh, if we have just a quick look at the tail of the tape on this one and then a look at the final standings. So just zipping through here. Uh, always some advantage for white until right around this point after that queen takes f2 this was black's moment to play instead of e4 that knight takes b4 move tough to pull the trigger on that one for sure being already down a piece and investing another one in that position would have been very scary for team white to try and find some defense in that position and it was just growing from there there's really no turning back uh, for black after the e4 move. Inaccuracies, mistakes, blunders, as you can see. Average centi pawn loss, 23 for Caruana and 50 for Aronian. And looking at now the standings after round 13. Here we go. So Caruana, with this win, goes into clear first. Mehmed Yarov won his 13th round game. Karyakin drew. Ding Liren drew. And any one of these three, or excuse me, any one of these four, uh, Karwana, Mehmed Yarov, Karyakin, or Liren, can win this event. So I have the tiebreak scenarios. In the event you end up with the same number of points, this is what we would look to. I have it written all out here. The tie breaks run as follows. First tie break that's looked into is the head-to-head -head matchups. The second is number of wins in the tournament. And the third is the Son of, Son of Born Burger system, which is, well, I'll explain that in a little bit. So just looking at the tie break scenarios, if Karwana, Karyakin, and Mehmed Yarov are tied in the end. Mehmed Yarov would win 
due to the head-to-head -head tiebreak, the first tiebreak. Karyakin beat Karawana, but Mehmed Yarov beat Karyakin. In the end, Mehmed Yarov would win in that scenario. Kar Karawana versus, or excuse me, Karawana and Karyakin, if they end up tied, Karyakin would win because of the head-to-head -head matchup. Karyakin beat Karawana. Karawana in Mehmed Yarov. This is the one that would come down to that third tiebreak. In the head-to-head, uh, -head, they had both. Uh, they both drew. In the second tiebreak, they would both have the same number of wins. So we would have to look at the third, which is that uh, little system that's used, uh, Sonneborn Burger system, which is basically a system that takes into account the performance of the players in the tournament. So as an example, uh, Caruana beat Aronian in this tournament, but Aronian's performance is not too good. He only has four points. So that type of result, that type of win, is not given as much credit as, let's say, Mamed Yarov's win over Karyakin in this tournament. Karyakin is having a good performance. So that's basically how it works. And in the end, Mamed Yarov would have a much better, uh, would be given much better credit, would have more points in that sense for that third tiebreak. If it comes down to Karwana and Ding, Karwana would win because of the second tiebreak. Karwana would have more wins than Ding. And in the third scenario, Ding can actually win if it's Karwana, Mehmed Yarov, and Ding uh, all tied, which is very interesting. This would come down to the head-to-head -head result. Karwana and Mehmed Yarov both uh, drew their games, but Ding won and drew against Mehmed Yarov, which would give Ding Lirin the win. So he still has a chance. Uh, Ding Liren is the only one who has not suffered a loss in this tournament. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out the final round. These are correct. I am certain of that now. The final round pairings. Grishuk versus Karawana. Karyakin versus Ding. Kramnik versus Mehmed Yarov. And a contest that really won't have any impact on the result, Aronian versus So. Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video. Put your prediction in before the 14th and final round, and maybe uh, come back and brag when you are correct. Um, anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback. Hope you got something out of it, and I will catch you in the next video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.